Hey everyone, today we are going to open up our lithium iron phosphate battery here. It's a LifePo 4. It's 12 volt nominal or 12.8 volt nominal, so it's considered a 12 volt battery. Uh, it has 100 amp hour capacity. So in two previous videos we did, we did a 0.2C capacity test. So we ran the battery for five hours at 0.2C or a 20 amp draw. And we got just over 1,280 watts, so it passed that test. Another test we did was a maximum discharge, so we pulled 100 amps for about 15 minutes to show that the battery could handle it, and it did well. Uh, we showed temperatures and all that kind of stuff. Those videos are available on our social media channel, so uh, if you want to go check those out and scroll through and, and see what that stuff is all about, please do. We encourage you. On this video, we're going to actually cut this open. First, I'm going to talk about some of the physical characteristics of the battery, and then we'll, we'll actually get into cutting this thing open. So. On the top here, you see you have two potted M8 terminals. So they're potted and epoxy. This side's black, this side's red. They also have lock washers and uh, flat washers in there. And then we also have a Bluetooth switch for uh, to turn the Bluetooth on and off. The reason we put a physical switch in was for power consumption concerns and for security concerns. And then lastly, here we have, well, second to last, we have a regular voltmeter, which only gives the actual voltage across the terminal so it's not an accurate state of charge but it can tell you at a quick glance if the battery is fully charged or completely dead um, or somewhere in the middle and then lastly we have just a, a simple strap here that's removable easily removable you just slide it off we're going to do that here in a second when we go to open this thing up um, okay so that's it for the characteristics and kind of the what we're going to do here my my tactic here is going to be we're going to cut into the back because i don't want this shorting out the terminals in the front we're going to start in the back and we're going to come down the sides and then we'll kind of peel that back and maybe score along the back here so we can open this up a little easier. All right, that's it. Uh, enough talking. Let's get to it. side down. All right, that is two edges down. Get to it. Okay, we got second side off, so now we basically just have to get we're basically going to score the front now, and then we'll be able to kind of peel it back. All right, I'm starting to see it break through there, so I think we're scored enough here. I don't want to go too deep on this. We'll go ahead and flip this up. See if we can see if we can see what we can see here. There we go. Popped it right off. Okay, look at that. But just that first opening. You can see the BMS on top. You can see the stuff connected inside. It's all got really good caulking inside of there. Nice air gaps. Here we go. Take a look. Okay, hey guys. We, uh, we got the place cleaned up real quick. Had to take a break for that. I, I just couldn't take that plastic bin everywhere. Uh, so real quick, I'll kind of walk through all this before we actually pull the cell out and kind of go over some stuff here. Um, we'll start with the negative, we'll kind of go through the Tron flow, then we'll talk about the peripheral stuff, and finally the last two connectors and the tent probe. We'll go over that real quick. Um, so first of all, just from a structural standpoint, you can see there's a foam, there's foam filling on each side, they're foam blocks. We'll take, we can get, you know, there's always one loose because you can't get it in with the sticky tape. So we'll pull that out and show that basically that's the foam. It's a rigid foam. And then you had the four on top that was pressed against here. So that keeps the battery physically secure. It's not going anywhere. The BMS is held on with caulking glue around the edges and as well as a, uh, an adhesive strip on the bottom and then tape holding it down to the top. It's not going anywhere. It's all very secure. Uh, but going through the wiring, so we got two negative uh, Poles, we got two negative wires coming out here into the BMS, two more coming out here, and then through your load coming across the positive. And you can see 
We have two AWGs here, two AWGs, eight AWGs. So it's all eight, eight AWG wiring, including the positive. And there may be some questions about, hey, there's only one wire on the on that eight on the positive pole for eight AWG. Um, and yes, it's true, but this wiring is silicone based or silicone uh, covered wiring, and it's made to hold up to 200 amps continuous. Same stuff that they use in like uh, quadcopters, high power devices with those small high C capacity uh, lipos. Same stuff, so you got two, two, and one. The only distance where you're covering about 12 inches is, is um, from the positive to the positive here, positive to positive. So for that short of a distance, 200, 200 amps wouldn't be unreasonable. Um, that would be pushing it, but 100 for sure, which is what this is rated for, is absolutely nothing for that. If you got any questions, I'm sure there's gonna be some comments on that, but I'm happy to, to point you to some links and stuff where you can read up about this specific wiring and how it can handle it. It's that really angel hair thin fiber stranded uh, copper inside and I'll, I'll overlay a picture of it here so you can see what I'm talking about but this stuff can handle some serious amps. So we'll put that one aside. Uh, other than that in here we got the voltmeter from the top here. It's sitting right here. It's just a positive to positive, negative to negative. Uh, pretty simple on that. You got the Bluetooth here and the Bluetooth switch here. Uh, that's simple. So I'll turn it off. It's off. Turn it on. And it's on, and that's it. Uh, so that goes into the UART connector on the um, BMS board here. And that's basically it for that connection. We'll have to cut that off and take it out. And the only other connector on the board that we need to talk about is for the balance leads. And you'll see that when we pull this out and actually lay it down. And then there's also a temperature probe that goes down inside with the balance leads. So yeah, that's it. We got that one out. It's also uh, adhesive stripped to the bottom, so I will do my best to try to get this out. Um, I'll probably have to get a heat gun. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing out of here and then we'll lay down the front and see what we got inside. Side, see the foam in there. I have the adhesive strips down there. Cool. Lay this down carefully. I'm gonna put foam block underneath just to keep it from this. That foam will stick to the. And we will carefully cut down the edge here. And there you got the foam, guys. All right, there we go. So there's the front of it. You can see a temperature probe and then you can see all your balance leads coming out. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and get the BMS. We'll start getting that taken off. We'll disconnect the positive and the negative here. And then we can try to get this out. We'll get the BMS off the top at that point as well. out of the way and negatives off we'll go ahead and try to cut the through the this rubbery stuff up here to get this connector out there we go okay and then balance leads as well we'll go ahead and pull the temperature probe up through here gently all right and the BMS is free let's go ahead and put this back on so it's not a loose wire just dangling about. Right. Everything is free. There's nothing dangerous now. Go ahead and get this BMS off. Hang on. Here's my mini solid metal crowbar here. There's the adhesive on the bottom. A little more caulking. Awesome. So there's the front of it. And let's see if we can. So there are the cells. That's awesome. So 
So here's your temp probe coming off of the BMS. You can see that was securely on there. You can see the weld quality on the bottom. Pretty solid. I'll pick that up, make sure it gets in focus. There's the welds. Glued down really nicely. Very sticky. Yeah. So there you go. The rest of it's just clean up. That's, uh, that's basically the teardown though. So I don't know what more I can, I can do for you on that one. You can see here that looks pretty solid. Make sure it gets in focus. Get a good look at that. On here, like again, solid aluminum cased. This here alone is 17 and a half pounds uh, for four cells at 100 amps. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's what you got. I'll go ahead and do this right now. Let's pull this off. So this is the one we ran this at 100 C yesterday. There's nothing bad on here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. This isn't exactly the perfect cutter, but there we go. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. Well, it's right here. Let's see if I can get the get it to focus on there. See inside of there, these wires are so thin. That's why they can handle so many amps. And there's just bundles and bundles in there with more bundles. It's uh, it's quite a bit of strands in there it's amazing um, and then being silicon wrapped that's yeah so that's all i got guys that's the that's the tear down if you got any questions post them in the comments below i'm sure there's going to be some uh on youtube there'll be comments below and facebook you can uh well comment as well uh speaking of social media follow us on facebook you can uh we've got links to buy these batteries there of course uh there'll be amazon links you can buy these on amazon and yeah like this if you like the video give us a thumbs up uh, don't forget if you're watching this on YouTube you can subscribe down below and click the bell icon for notifications in the future and please give us a like if you if you like the video and if you're on YouTube check out Facebook it's a uh, home facebook.com backslash rebel batteries and then youtube.com backslash rebel batteries if you're watching on Facebook anyway uh, yeah that's all I got guys thanks for watching and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next video